What's going on guys, Roadrunner44 back with you again for another video from Microsoft Flight Simulator. And, you know what, before we get started, just take the drone up here, and you know what, just take that view in for a second. Holy crap. <laughs> so if you cannot guess, we are on the South Island of New Zealand in Queenstown. So this is the Queenstown Airport, November Zulu, Quebec November is the identifier. And we're picking up a little bit of lag here, <laughs> but that's probably just because the uh, area around here is kind of detailed. So hopefully with where we're going, the lag won't be as bad, but you know what? We'll find out. And about the aircraft we're flying today, this is a freeware Cessna 170B by Sal 1800. This just came out the other day. It's on flightsome.to. I will have a link to it in the description below. So this video today is pretty much going to be one, a little bit of a review of this aircraft because I haven't flown it yet. And also a little bit of adventure because we're going to go out and hop several different airstrips in this general area here. So you know what? Let's get into it. <laughs> let's jump in the cockpit. Let's get this thing fired up and let's see if I can, uh, <laughs> let's see if I can still fly tailwheel. All right, let's take a quick little look at the modeling here as we kind of sort the external model. Now, obviously, as far as the modeling and texture goes, it's not as good as Carinado. <laughs> they are pretty good at their visuals. Um, and even the developer of this says that it, you know, not expected to be on the Carinado level as far as visuals go. But, you know, as all add-ons, I'm sure this is going to improve over time and it's only going to get better and better. So, yeah, I mean, modeling, you can definitely tell there's a couple areas that are a little low poly. You can kind of see some ridges in the modeling, but you know, it's a freeware aircraft, so you can't really complain a whole lot. You can get rid of the yokes. Love that feature. I love that that's kind of a standard feature in Microsoft Flight Simulator now. Um, okay, let's see. We're gonna go ahead and put the beacon on. And where is Master? Mixture is full in. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't want to do that just yet. Throttle. Parking brake is on. Radio. Blah, blah, blah. Lights, lights. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I don't believe I am. Where is... Isn't there a primer? Yes. I don't know if this primer works or not, but we'll go ahead and give her three shots of primer. Um, ah, wonder. Tell if that set the off or not. I oh. don't think it is, but we'll see. It looks like it may be, but I, I can't tell. I don't know which direction is the correct direction. Let's pull the starter. Nothing. Okay. Ah, okay. It looks like we got a left and right tank. Okay, it's got a both. Sweet. All right. It was off. Uh, hopefully this doesn't flood it, but I hope we'll give it a, another three shots. It's a little fast on the primer. Oh, well. And still nothing. What could I be doing wrong? The mixture is pulled the lean. That's all the way in. Oh. Helps to put the mags on. There we go. <laughs> I guess it's been a while since I've flown a 170. Alright. We're going to get our parking brake off. We're clear on the left. We're on the right. Let's see, let's lower our throttle. We are creeping along with the throttle at idle. It's, yeah, I don't know if that's... I can't speak on if that's accurate or not. I've never flown a 170 in real life. But we are going to give her a little throttle here just to climb up over this hill. Now, 
I have never been to this airport, so I really don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Obviously, I scoped it out a little bit beforehand. So I think we get on this pavement here. We ride this out just a little ways here. Let's see if we can see what's going on in front. Yeah. I believe, is it this one here? Easily break here. Let's just see. I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> That's fuel. Okay, so it's straight ahead on this narrow one right here. And then that one should get us out to runway 32. And we'll probably just take off from runway 32. I don't know what the wind's doing, but... Definitely not see a whole lot. Keep the yoke pulled back to keep a tail on the ground. Luckily, when you get on a taxiway, you have a little bit of forward visibility over the nose. So you can kind of see out in front of you. You know, you just can't see what's off to your right that well. And as far as which weather preset this is, it's DNBOF atmospheric. And so this uh, this whole flight is basically a whole list of unknowns. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that after we take off. We'll give a little bit of crosswind correction here. It doesn't actually look like there's that much wind. Just very easily come up on the power. Now that our tail is up. And increase the power even more trying to maintain center line and we'll pull back and at the same time we're giving a little bit of upward trim and so far lifted off pretty nice now we do have some all obstacles we got a construction crane off to the right hand side coming in the view <laughs> any second now there it is so we need to make sure we avoid all that. Let's give a little bit of a rock. Look over that direction. And you know what? Just because we have some high hills over here to our left-hand side, we're going to do just a little bit of a climbing churn. Get rid of our flaps. Oh, man, that view. I need to fly in New Zealand a lot more. Pull the power back a little bit. And hopefully that cloud bank stays away, because I believe this is the direction we're supposed to be headed. Let's double check on the map. No iPad today, because, well, yeah, it's not hooking up for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, this is the right direction. And NZ59 is going to be our first stop here. That is Walter Peak. So, like I was saying before, we were taking off. This flight is a big flight of unknowns. So, that Queenstown Airport, never flown there before. It's a download or a scenery. That is by uh, Token Kiwi. It's also off of flightsum.to. I will link that in the description, as well as the aircraft and all the sceneries we'll be visiting today. And what the hell, I'll go ahead and throw the weather presets pack in there as well. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, never been the or uh, never flown to Queenstown Airport. I have six other or uh, sorry, five other airports here that we're going to be visiting. I've never flown in these airports. I've never flown this aircraft, and I've never used this weather preset pack. <laughs> so. We are about as deep into a review as you can get, or as deep into an unknown as you can go. So, wish me luck. <laughs> so far, so far so good. Alright, pull back power a little bit more for a nice, slightly high-powered cruise here. I don't want to go too slow on the cruise because well then it's going to take forever it 
so while we're approaching Walter's Peak here, or Walter Peak, I should probably go over our uh, five destinations. So the first one, as I said, is going to be Walter Peak. Next one is going to be Mount Nicholas, followed by Greenstone Station. Um, not sure exactly how to pronounce this one. I think it's Glenorchy. Glenorchy? So, uh, something like that. It's in the uh, description if you want to read it. <laughs> Uh, th it's one of those that I feel like it should be said literally how it's spelled, but then again, I somehow always end up second guessing my second guessing myself on these. Um, then after that one, we're going the Paradise Airstrip, and that's likely where we where we will be ending this flight at. Pull the power back a little bit here because we don't want to get up too high. We'll do, was that, 2200-ish RPM. All right, and we're gonna start a little bit of a rapid descent here, cause uh, eh, we probably climbed a little higher than we should have. I cannot remember if this is a carbureted or a fuel injected engine. Oh shoot, we forgot to turn our lights on, didn't we? And our radio, and our avionics. Nav lights. Okay, car beat. Oh. So this is a carbureted engine. That's right, that's right. So this 170B uses the default, or the stock, I should say, engine that the 170B came with, which I uh, was a six-cylinder, 145 horsepower Continental. I'm pretty dang sure. Um, so yeah, that's what this is based off of. So if you feel like this is a little underpowered as compared to the Carinado, I'm pretty sure the Carinado version has an upgraded, or the upgraded engine in it. Which, I don't remember what the upgraded engine is. Maybe a... Maybe a 180 horsepower? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, while we're on the topic of this model, it also comes with 29-inch bush wheels, which is what we're on right now, as well as straight floats, which is something that the Carinado model does not have. Let's take a look at our map here, because I don't know. We've flown past it, so that was probably it back there. Let's see if we can find the airport. It's a grass strip. That's a field. Let's go ahead and make a little bit of a circling turn here. I bet you that's it right there. We'll make a little bit of a pass up near the hills here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. I don't know if there's any buildings or anything here or not. There's definitely a runway there with markers. I think. Yeah, there's a group of sheep. I believe those are sheep. As I said, I didn't really look at these sceneries that much. I actually didn't even look at the previews for the sceneries. Except for, you know, just the few I saw. There's an aircraft on its nose, it looks like. Or maybe not. All right, so that's our runway. We'll just, uh, I guess, follow this road on up from the lake here. Never made an approach in these, so. Can 
go ahead and pull power here. We're well within the white arc, so let's go ahead and get some flaps down. Go ahead and get our nose down, because we're rapidly losing airspeed. And with this being the first flight of this aircraft, this also means that this is going to be the first landing I have ever done in this aircraft. Well, in this model. I've flown, like I said, the uh, Caronado 170. Gotta watch our airspeed, not get too slow. But we want it to be right there, right on the edge of that stall. Because we're going for a short landing. I believe the runway's the wider green. But we're just going to very gently ease around here. Yeah, we came in a little bit flat there. And we're just barely holding the tail up off the ground. And I'm not using any brakes right now. We got plenty of runway. Okay, so I'm guessing this runway is a lot wider than I thought it was. So maybe it's from fence to fence then. I don't see any marker cones or anything down. Unless they're buried in the tall grass. Do a little bit of S turning here so we can see where we're going. Alright, we are lined up. We're going to go to flaps one. And I'm just going to hold back pressure, go full throttle here. give her a little bit of forward pressure just to get that tail up. It's not ready to fly yet. It's more speed. There we go. We'll ease her off. Flaps up. Build some air speed. And I forgot. Take the car beat off. <laughs> oh well. That's maybe why we're a little underpowered. All right, let's see what our next stop is going to be. So next stop is Mount Nicholas, which should be NZ58. So just around the bend here. So let's not climb up too high. Let's go ahead and get our nose down and I'll level off here. Just looking out for the strip here. It should be right off our right hand side. Or sorry, left hand side. Um, that may be it right there. That building you know, looks like more sheep or something. Let's go ahead and pull our power. We'll get our carb heat pulled. You know what? Maybe we'll try a little bit of a high approach this time, shall we? Go ahead and get our flaps pulled in. You know what? I'm hearing electric flaps, but this is definitely mechanical flaps. Eh, maybe. Maybe that's not electrical sound. It almost sounds like an electric flap sound, but it may not be.
The flaps on this thing are pretty dang effective, I will say. Lost a lot of altitude without having to gain a lot of speed. Hey look, another 170. Alright, let's see if we can do better on our landing this time. Oh yeah. Nice little three-pointer. And we'll go ahead and give her some break in action. You can't tell I'm warming up to this aircraft. <laughs> I started off as easy as I could go. And as we get farther along, I'll start pushing the limits more and more. Look at all of them sheep. Oh, we got plenty of... That we're a heck of a lot closer than what we are. These are some nice little airstrips. I like these. You know, I think our 170 disappeared. <laughs> I don't see it there anymore. I think it's where that guy was standing. Alright, let's get our camera reset. Get our flaps pulled out. Let it. Uh, let's remember to put our carb heat in this time. Flaps are all the way out, and we're gonna go one notch again. And I'm not gonna touch the trim at all. Go figure out where the center runway is. I think right about here. Looks like there's a little bit of a brown streak going down the center. All right, hold back pressure. Let's go full throttle. This time, I'm going to pick the tail up as early as I can. Here we go. Tail is up. River flaps and kind of ride the ground effect out here. There we go. All right, onward and upward. Do the next. Let's not climb out too steep here. <laughs> I probably should do some stalls in this aircraft, but let's try not to do them so close to the ground. And yeah, unintentionally. <laughs> All right, where to next? Um, so we visited Walter Peak. That was Mount Nicholas. And I guess the next one is Greenstone Station. Let's look at our map. It's basically the perimeter of the lake. So NZ57, I believe, should be Greenstone Station. Which makes uh, NZGY, Lenorkey or whatever the hell we decide that's called. Which would make sense. G-Y. And then uh, Paradise Airstrip is NZ-5-6. So basically we were just flying the length of this lake plus some. scenery in this area. It's just awesome. You know, I've flown in New Zealand a handful of times throughout, you know, FSX prepared and now Microsoft Flight Simulator. But it's always been around the Milford Sound area. I've never really came back into this area. And man, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> 
I'm gonna have to start branching out to some of these other areas because this, you know, Mil Milford sounds one thing. You know, there's great scenery there. You got the tall freaking peaks and cliffs and stuff, waterfalls. But uh, yeah, this this area is just awesome as well. And this weather preset, these freaking clouds, how dense they are, how stacked up. And you know, so far, we really haven't flown into any harsh cloud cover, so I guess the ceilings are a lot higher than what they've looked. Let's see, let's take a look back behind us here from external view. If there was any low bases, then they definitely moved out. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of lag spikes as we move the view around, but I guess that's to be expected. Because it's loading in scenery. Loading in and then unloading <laughs> as I move my view around. I could solve that by putting my, uh, was it like, um, oh, I can't remember what the setting's called, the little cache thing, you know, the low, medium, high, off screen. I think it's like off screen caching. I could fix that by putting it to, you know, high or something like that. But I run it at medium just because it's a nice, happy balance between lag when you're moving your view around and overall performance. I guess I probably should have looked at my distances before I did this flight because, man, am I misjudging distances right now. I thought I'd have a lot more in route time between that last airstrip and here. Let's see, I'm thinking that's it over there by that hillside. Seems like there's a very defined line right there. If we look on the map, there's a little bit of a divot right here off our left-hand side. Throw up the map. There's that divot right there. And then right on this point is where the airstrip is supposed to be. So I'm guessing that's what that is. Let's uh, lower nose up a little bit here. Get just a little bit more into the white arc. We'll go ahead and slam some flaps in. I'm thinking. I'm gonna go ahead and turn out this way. I think kind of that brown line right there by the hillside is the wrong way. So let's go ahead and keep our descent coming here. If need be, we can do a little bit of a circle. I don't think we're going to need to, though. We'll go with more S turns as opposed to doing a circle. Turn back this direction. Then, still in the descent, we'll turn back this direction. I think I need to bump my reflections up a little bit. Reflections on the water are looking a little blocky. Unless I accidentally dropped them when I was messing with settings. There we go. I think that's going to work out just perfect. We may be a little fast, but we'll see. It may flare out pretty nice. I don't know. I think it's going to work out really nice. Actually, we may even have to add a little power. Yep. Have to even add a little power. A little bit of uh, old bushes on approach here. Yeah, 
we land a little flat on a three point, but this flaps up. down and let's taxi an external view let's take a look around get our sheep audience over there not to be confused with sheeple <laughs> nope just an audience of sheep I cannot get over the scenery this is awesome hey Hey, is for horses. A little bit of a... Let's see. We'll take a look when we spin around here. A little bit of a pink texture going on in that gate there. Yep. There's definitely some missing textures there. <laughs> well, howdy. You may not want to stand there. You get a... Uh, a little bit of a dust bath here in a second. All right. Checklist. Back in internal view for takeoff. <laughs> Car beats off. Flaps are at one notch. View recentered. And you know what? We're not going to hold the brakes on this one. We got a pretty long runway. Ease into the throttle, being a little bit courteous for the sheep behind us. A little bit of forward pressure, get that tail up. And once the needle starts moving, you can give her a little bit of back pressure. Go ahead and get rid of the flaps. Ride her out in ground effect for a second. We should probably pull back power here. And this time, I kind of know where I'm going. Just so that we stay within gliding range of land, we're going to stay along the coast here. Even though, technically, we could be a little faster by going direct towards the airport. But it's just good practice to stay, you know... Stay within a gliding distance of where you may have to potentially crash. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, you know, I see a lot better locations in the water right now. Even if it's a little uphill. You know, maybe that's what we should do in one video. Maybe we should do a little bit of dead stick practice. Heck, maybe we'll do that in New Zealand. We got hills. We got nice scenery. It'd be a shame not to show it off. Might as well do a little bit of an outside view showcase here. Alright, we're probably close enough. We can cut over now. I believe it's on the right-hand side of this delta area here. Let's go ahead and check our map. Uh, actually, we flew past it. <laughs> it's back behind us. Alright, well, let's go ahead and kill power here, because we're probably a lot closer than we think we are. Seems to be how the theme is going today. And we need to be looking out for an airstrip. So, basically, right off the nose, maybe this field right here along the trees... Question mark? That looks like it may be it. I see a couple hangers. 
Well, we're already kind of set up for 45 for left downwind, so let's just go ahead and do that. Alright, we're definitely a little high. We have slowed up just enough that we can finally get some flaps in. Let's go ahead and get full flaps. You know what they say, hit the flap button and then click it 40 more times to make sure the flaps are still down. <laughs> just don't do that with the uh, just don't do that with the gear lever or the gear button. That one uh, uh th that one doesn't work the same. All right. Go ahead and start a turn. Look at that. We're going to go full break in action on this one. Ooh, a little bit of bounce. Heavy brakes. Pull back on the yoke. Let's see. Yeah, that's not too bad. It definitely could have been shorter. Always be shorter. Go ahead, back taxi a little bit here. Got a little bit of construction going on. more of an S turn, deeper S turn going on so I can see what's going on. We got a bush right there. And you know what? We got fence closing on, so we're probably near the end. Actually, we might have taxi past it. I think these are edge markers or corner markers right here. Yep, they sure are. That's okay. all fair game as far as I'm concerned. Alright, one notch of flaps coming down. Our beat goes in. Just in our view. Full brakes. Back pressure. Full throttle. Release. And we'll give her a little bit of forward pressure just to get the tail up. The tail is flying. Barely. And we'll wait for the needle to move on the airspeed indicator. There it is. Build a little airspeed. We'll get rid of the flaps. Continue building airspeed. And we'll start a nice steady climb out. Yeah, this aircraft flies incredible. If you're on the fence about getting this model or the Carinato model, you know, if you can put up with the visuals, if you're not as much of an eye candy person, this thing flies beautifully. There's absolutely nothing wrong so far that I found with how this thing flies. So, yeah, as of right now, if you want a good alternative to the Carinado 170B, <laughs> do not hesitate to go pick this thing up. All right, next location, final location, Paradise Airstrip it is dead ahead. Let's see, I think it's on the other side of the side of the river, on the other side of the river, where it V's off. So probably up there where those kind of brownish fields are. I got some brownish fields, and you got those hills right there. And what looks like a little bit of a town, maybe? Let's 
going to be somewhere in that area. And we're going to pull some more power back. Let's go ahead and go to 2200. We're fairly close to it at least. Trim her up for a nice steady descent. Interesting. Seems to be a kind of a hard center on the view right there. Luckily, nothing really uh, messing with how the aircraft functions. Just got to you uh, can kind of slowly you'll run into this. But if you push the mouse through it, <laughs> eventually it pops through it. I've actually never seen that before, but. We're going to cut this direction just a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Okay, there's that pond I think that was on the map. So the airfield should be right before that pond. No, that can't be it. telltale sign should be if it stays the same as all the other airstrips there should be some sheep around somewhere <laughs> so we just gotta look out for some sheep maybe I'm crazy maybe that's not the pond maybe it's on up farm fields Almost looks like it could be a runway there, but I believe that's way too far up. I've probably passed by it already. And you guys are probably sitting there watching this video saying, Hey, it's back there! But you know what? I can't hear you. <laughs> Where were you when I was actually here flying it? That's okay. Plenty of time, plenty of fuel. Oh, you know what? It's probably that right there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like I said, there's the sheep. Apparently sheep always mark the ends of runways in New Zealand. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and turn this into a base turn. We're on the brakes here, get ourselves slowed up. Throw in all the flaps we got. There's the wrong way. Give the sheep a wave as we come over. A little bit of a forward slip in here. We got some bystanders over there watching us. Do probably the worst landing of the day. But maybe we can save it. Not bad. I'll take it.
All right, let's find some place to park, shall we? So there's people standing back here, so let's go over there and we'll see what they're doing. I have to fall into what I guess is like a pond of sorts here. Not really, I don't even, you can't really even consider that a pond. That's a puddle. <laughs> I actually wish it was water so I could taxi through it. Although I don't know that water will show up on a area that small. Hey, they're animated. Or at least one of them is waving at me. Oh, let's not take the wing off. Go just like that. That way we're not blasting them with prop wash. Alright. Off the top of my head, shut down checklist. Keep just a little bit of throttle in. That way we're not fouling up plugs or anything. We'll put the carb heat in. Um, pull the mixture out a little bit without killing it so we don't foul our plugs even though that's not really simulated beacon stays on turn the strobe off landing lights will come off we can go ahead and get rid of the radio radio and transponder which we didn't use nav lights go ahead and get those turned off parking brake is on all those are shut Now all we need to do is pull the mixture. Pull the mixture. Turn the mags off. Push the master in. You cut the master off. Alrighty guys. Well thanks for following along. That was a fun flight. I'm definitely going to have to come back to New Zealand. This is just beautiful country out here, and you know what? I'm going to definitely have to do some more flying in this 170. This is an awesome model, even if the visuals are a little bit lacking right now. I tell you what, this is definitely in my top 10 list. Actually, really, probably top 5. Anyways, thanks for following along. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up down below. Leave me a comment, and if you feel also inclined, hit the subscribe button. Let's get up to 500 subscribers. I know that we can do it. But hey, as always guys, Rotornet44, over and out.